Hey y'all, today I'll be installing this wired floodlight from Marine. It'll be the first project of a few I got going on. This one's just the floodlight. Next video I'll do the floodlight plus the camera. And the third one I'll do the low voltage um, transformer from Marine for the front yard. And I'll show you how to wire that and everything. This one's actually going in a spot with uh, no current wiring to it. So I'll be running some conduit to an outdoor box, uh, to a couple outdoor boxes actually. And I'll show you how to wire that up uh, if you're having the same issue where you want a floodlight somewhere but you don't have the cables uh, to install it. I'll show you how to do it. It's fairly simple. Uh, so you'll see here it's ring bridge enabled. That's just a little guy down here. That uh, primarily just helps you configure a few different lights. So this floodlight, the floodlight camera, and the low voltage transformer. You can configure them all together, um, do a few different settings. Uh, so we'll play around with that and one of these videos maybe a separate video um, but let's go ahead and break open this box and see what's inside i should really invest in a tripod all right so let's dive in so first off we got a little it's like a user manual of some sorts Turn off the circuit breaker, <clears throat> all the obvious stuff, adjust it, how to connect it to the electrical box outside. I'll show you how to do that. Eh. All right, scan the code, sticker for your front door if you want, or your window, random stuff in there, Hello. phone numbers, operating conditions. Tools. Let's see what we got going on here. Ooh. Oh, it comes with one. Nice. So that's going to go on your four inch round electrical box. A little screwdriver going on. Flathead, Phillips head. Got some wire nuts for your wires. Show you how to do all this later on. Different type of screws. All right. So I'll take this little cardboard thing out and there she is floodlight motion sensor all right weatherproof garment and this will go on your four inch round electrical box to that metal bracket that's right there Blop, just like that and that's it so let's get to installing all right so this is where that floodlight is going to go right here on this corner uh, first thing you got to do if you don't have any wires, electrical wires uh, to your floodlight, you're going to have to find the closest electrical outlet. And as you see, there's this outdoor one uh, with no cover. Uh, we're going to have to redo this because I'm running conduit up the wall. And in order to connect to this box, you have to extend it. And I'm going to update this because I'll show you what's behind this later pretty much rusted out. There's a round electrical box. I'm not sure why they did that, uh, but I'll show you how to change this out. Um, but I got a power outlet there. Uh, and there's also one in this bedroom right there. We could drill out. Um, it would probably look cleaner with no conduit coming down, but I kind of want to keep this outdoor light on an outdoor circuit, uh, GFCI protected. So uh, we'll go ahead and start by changing this out uh, so I can run the conduit up this gutter and then we're going to land it probably right about there, right in the middle of the screen. Because uh, the lighting out here is pretty terrible at night. We got this single little light right there, it doesn't do much. So let's get started down here and we'll continue from there. So first thing you want to do is check for voltage. We've got a little voltage tester from Klein Tools. So the hot's the smaller one. Uh, that's your neutral and then your ground. So we'll go ahead and press the button. So we got power to that. So we'll go to the uh, breaker panel and turn the circuit off before we start working. Alrighty, pop this open. Nothing's really labeled here, but if you can kind of get in there, you'll see that these bottom five over here are lights and receptacles. Uh, so without turning off my daughter's Wi-Fi, we'll go one by one. We'll uh, listen for her screaming here in a second. <laughs> All 
right. That wasn't it. All right, let's check this again. So I found one labeled garage, which makes sense. This is probably chained off of that GFCI outlet in the garage. If I can get this to work. I think the battery's going out. Hmm. All right, so we're good. Let's open this up. These terminals are all rusted and the cable's rusted, so I'm gonna have to chop off probably an inch of the cable and get some fresh copper exposed. So we'll double check. And the hot terminals, good to go. So there's the outlet, obviously pretty old and worn down. So we're gonna swap it out for a brand new one, a little shinier. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cut these down and get some fresh copper exposed. So you'll see there's a round electrical box right there. I was debating on how to cover that up because I need to put this on there in order to connect the conduit there and run it up the wall. As you can see, it doesn't really cover up the hole too well. So I thought maybe I could put this square grommet on there and. Maybe glue it on there with some construction adhesive. Um, but then you'd have, you know, probably a half inch to an inch of that exposed. Wouldn't look too good. So I finally came across this little guy. It's a little adapter. Fits on a round outlet just like this. And it pretty much converts it to a rectangle box, which is perfect. Just what I need. So that's going to go like that. And I'll put this weatherproof outlet like that and the conduit's going to come out the side, up the wall. So we'll go ahead and start by cutting these cables off. So what I'll do now is I'll get some measurements for the conduit work out pretty good. And we'll go ahead and go into the garage and measure some conduit real quick. All right, we'll go ahead and put this box connector for half inch EMT. It's gonna be on this top hole. So when we go into the garage to measure this conduit and bend it, uh, with these box connectors, the conduit goes in about three quarters of an inch into this box connector. So we're gonna add that on to the distance between this, the very end of this box connector to the water drain. So from the water drain to the very end of the box connector is, we'll go six and a quarter, and then we'll add three quarters of an inch, which is seven inches. So I'll show you how to measure that. And from here, we're gonna go about eight feet up, just above that line, and do a little 45 degree angle up to the round electrical box. And we'll mount the box there. Uh, we'll clamp the conduit to the wall and get it ready with a box offset. You can see that's about a, probably three quarters of an inch off the wall. So the conduit is gonna come in flush and we'll have to offset it just a little bit and I'll show you how to do that. Um, Condo is going to shrink a little bit so our seven inches will probably be more like seven and a quarter uh, just to get it level with this so it's not you know bending this back or anything like that. So let's go bend some conduit. All right so looking at this chart if we're looking at the half inch offset depth it's about as close as we can get to the five eighths of an inch uh, that that box connector is off the wall. Uh, so we'll do 
Let's do a 30 degree bend. So we're gonna have two of those. And the condo is gonna shrink one eighth of an inch. And the distance between the bends is gonna be one inch. Uh, so we'll go ahead and make those marks, show you what that looks like. What's up, baby? Who? Nikki. Oh, that's my daughter, Charlie. She's a Yankee fan. I'm a Rangers fan, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. See, let's bend conduit. Oh. That's Nikki. That's Nikki. All right. So here's our half inch bender, half inch EMT. You'll see our marks can go right here on this arrow. So we'll put our first mark there, bend to 30 degrees. And we'll do a 180 turn with the conduit to the next mark and bend 30 degrees the other way. And that'll be our offset. And then we'll do, uh, we'll measure seven inches. Um, you'll see right here it stubs to five inches. That means if you bend at the very end of the conduit, you're gonna have five inches from the wall to the very end of the conduit. So that's good. We'll just add two inches away from the very end of the conduit and uh, bend it from there. And that'll give us seven inches, which is perfect. That should be to the very edge of the wall uh, into the um, box connector. Got marks on the side right here. The side of the conduit bender. You got a 10 degree bend, 22 and a half, 30 degree bend, 45 degree and 60. So we're looking at this one, see if it's flush with the ground. And that looks about right. And for this next bend, I'll probably do it off camera because I need to go outside. I'll flip this down like that. I need to put this on the ground and I'll flip it in the air and uh, bend it the other way, 30 degrees. And then we'll come back inside and bend from here, 90 degrees, and we'll go see how it looks. So running into some issues, trying to bend this conduit. Um, I'm trying to do the offset at the end of this run at the box connector side. So it's too close um, to this wall to effectively do a 90 degree into a box connector. Um, I'm sure if I had a tool, um, there's a tool you actually put onto the pipe uh, that bends it, the box connector for you. Uh, but I don't have that on hand. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably come flush down the wall, do a uh, offset right here uh, to about half an inch off the wall, 90 degrees straight into the box. Uh, so we'll go try to do that. Okay, so there's our two inch mark right there. So we'll do the 90 first. And after the 90 ends, we'll make two marks for our 30 degree bends for the offset. And we'll see how it looks now. Should work out a little better. So we'll line up that arrow, make a mark, and we'll bend 90. So, all right, our two 30 degree bends for the offset. <clears throat> uh, so we'll do this first one and then we'll do this one. So just gotta make sure you do the offset right, because it might not work out too well if you do it wrong. So we'll have the box on this side, the wall. So what needs to happen is, um, we'll do this one first, uh, starting down, and then we'll flip this around. So it's facing away from the box, and the other way, and then I'll give this the correct offset. All right, so we got it plugged up. It's not fully attached yet, but I just wanted to see if it worked out and it did pretty good actually. So it's flush all the way to the box offset. Comes off on that 90 degree to the box. You'll see it's offset a little bit. So it turned out pretty good. Not my original plan. Sometimes you gotta improvise. 
So if you want some better tips and tricks on how to bend conduit, I'd go check out Electrician U, uh, Dusty over there. He taught me some pretty good tips and tricks on how to bend this. So I'll link that in my description and you can check that out. So I'm gonna make a mark on this conduit. Uh, so it's gonna do a little 45 degree bend. Um, and I'll probably start that probably right there. So I'll go ahead and make that mark. Let's say right there. We gotta make sure we bend it the right way. Cause if you don't, you have the 90 degree to the box offset straight up and then bend that way. So we gotta make sure when we got this on the floor, the 90 degrees coming up towards the ceiling. That way we'll have that mark and we'll bend it up towards us. That's so 45 degree going that way, coming down and the 90 going up towards the ceiling as well. So let's go bend that and we'll come back here and just cut off how much we want. Uh, put that electrical box up, connect it, and then we'll pull the cable through. So we'll go ahead and mark this all the way around. Like I said, I'm gonna paint over this, so it's not a big deal. Gives me a better idea of where my bend's gonna start. So, gotta make sure that's pointed straight up because the box will be right there. It'll hit the wall, come up the wall, and then bend up. So, just gotta make sure that's straight. And we'll get the conduit bender. Alright. Make sure that's as flush as possible to be straight at the very end where the box is. Alright. And that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do a 45 degree band here. Because that'll match up with the electrical box on the side of the wall. And that looks pretty good for 45 degrees. Cool, so we got a bent and I made another oops. I didn't factor in that we need to offset up here for the other box up there. So I did that really quick. I'll mark, we're gonna cut this. So I cut it about right there and we'll mount the box. All right, so I got the box and the adapter on the wall. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this conduit up and attach it to the wall and then put the box up top, this one. And we'll connect the two. And then we'll run the wire up the conduit and splice the uh, floodlight into this line right here. And we'll power it on and see how it does. So it's time to fish that cable through. So we're using 14-2 cable. 14 is your gauge, gauge cable. If you're unsure, um, if you have one of these cable strippers, you can see they got holes with the numbers next to them. So if you can't tell what the writing says on the cable, uh, you can look in here and put this around uh, the copper, bare copper cable. For my instance, it fit perfectly into 14. So I know it's 14 gauge. 
and the two next to that uh, pretty much means there's two conductors, uh, not counting the ground, of course. So 14-2 is the black, which is the line, the hot, white, neutral, and then green or bare copper ground. If you see one that says 14-3, it's got an extra red uh, hot cable in there. So let's get this fish through and pulled up to the box. So first things first, <clears throat> go ahead and wire up this outlet. So this is the cable up the conduit to the floodlight. And this is our line. This is our power feed. So we're gonna connect the floodlights black. And we got these little pigtails that we're gonna connect to the outlet. So probably strip off about three quarters of an inch on this side, connect it to the outlet. And this other side is gonna connect uh, we're gonna splice all three of these blacks together using wire nuts, and then the whites, and then the grounds. All right, so our hot's gonna go into here. Just like that. Our neutral sticks in the right thing. All you gotta do is insert in that hole and you're good. And then our ground's gonna go on this screw. So what we'll do is we'll use a, we'll use a screwdriver and make a little U for this to wrap around that, that screw, the ground screw. And you always wanna put it on clockwise, just like that. So when you go to screw it in, You want that to stay tight around the screw. Make sure it's on there. All right, so we're grounded there. So we'll go ahead and hook it all up. Strip off about three quarters of an inch there. Wire nuts. Need three of them. One for ground, one for neutral, and one for the hot.
Perfect. Now just push all these back in there. I'm not trying to damage any of these cables. That's the last thing you want. All right, so we got the ring floodlight. <clears throat> You'll see there's only a black and a white, uh, and we got a pair of copper going up, and that's actually gonna screw into a ground screw on that outlet. Uh, so we'll go up there and hook this up, and show you what it looks like at night, and we'll be done. Done. All right, hopefully nothing blows up. Sweet. I think we're good.